Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to watch this show called Industry. It's on HBO. It features a couple of young people who are looking to go into investment banking. The show goes over all of their struggles and their conflicts throughout their time there. I've heard pretty good reviews about the show. A lot of people seem like they're binging it. And so I'm really excited to start watching it and let you guys know what I think of it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an investment banking analyst working at a bulge bracket firm in New York City. And I make career videos focused on banking and occasional lifestyle and travel videos here on YouTube. I'm going to start watching episode one. Why are you here then? I think mediocrity is too well hidden by parents who hire private tutors. I am here on my own. Why did you read geography? Geography had the least amount of applicants the year before. So I think the atmosphere in the interview room is pretty accurate. Usually, this is how it looks. You'll sit across a conference room table from one to two interviewers, or even three at times, and they'll essentially grill you on questions similar to this. They won't all be technical. Some of them will just be random questions, like the ones these guys are getting. I didn't realize that we recruited from SUNY Binghamton. Non-target. So what they said about non-targets, I don't think anyone would actually say that during an interview. If they don't know your school at all, they might be like, oh, I've never heard of your school before. That's really interesting how many people go there. But I don't think anyone would say anything like, oh, we don't recruit from there. It's a non-target. <laughs> So the scene where she's walking through the city, I'd say that's a little bit reminiscent of how I feel. I mean, she's in London, I'm in New York City, but it's the same kind of feeling where it's all these high-rise buildings next to you and there's so much hustle and bustle from everyone trying to get to work in the morning. She's also the first one there at the desk in the morning and I'd say that's pretty representative of juniors specifically on their first day. Usually juniors are expected to get there earlier, especially if you're an intern as well. In six months time on RIF day, that's reduction in force, you'll be standing in this room telling all of us why you should be hired permanently to your desk. So look at the guy or gal next to you. Really look, do you think you're better than that? Maybe you are, but half of you won't be here in six months. Just make yourselves indispensable. Okay, so that was intense. They don't actually say that to you when you join as an intern. It's phrased much more like it'd be an open environment and an environment to help you learn. But essentially, that's what it is. It is a very competitive environment, especially during an internship where you are competing with others, in a sense, for open spots that are available for full-time. How's your model? You finish it in the morning. Send it over my way. I've got capacity. How do you have capacity? Through all finance, guy. I really don't see any reason for another full-timer to take on someone else's work. It almost never happens just because we're all on maybe three to four projects at the same time and there's always work and really any free time you get, you can get, you get. And you don't really get credit for doing someone else's work. You're bouncing. Hey man, hey, it's only 10.15. No one here is actually going to tell you this, but you need to put in FaceTime. Actually, I don't. Staying up on that doesn't enhance my work. What he said about FaceTime is actually really true. It varies from bank to bank and group to group. Some groups have more of a FaceTime culture. And what this means is that even when you're more free, you have to sit there and pretend like you actually have work and stay just as late as everyone else, even if you might have finished at 8 p.m. And 10, 15 p.m., it's really not that late in investment banking. A lot of the time there's still a bunch of analysts there at midnight, so if you're the one leaving at 10, 15 p.m., you might actually be the earliest one leaving the office. It's a quarter past six and I'm sipping all right. It's a quarter past six and I'm sipping all right. 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 I'm s
You've only left the building once in the last 48 hours. It's automatically red flagged by your ID card. I don't want to know where you've been sleeping, but optically, I need you to walk out of the office, tap your card out, do whatever, then come back. No more red flags. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so it is a little bit dramatic that this happened. Not that he slept overnight at the office. I do know people who have slept overnight at the office. But there's no red flag thing for not tapping your card out. At least I don't think so. There are sometimes red flags if you're working over 100 hours every week consecutively for maybe three weeks by the way she's treating this. You can tell she doesn't even care about his health at all. She's just telling him to tap in for the sake of not getting a red flag, but clearly she doesn't care that he hasn't been sleeping for 48 hours and has just been in the office and hasn't changed clothes. I think this is a bit dramatic. I do think people in investment banking will care about you if you slept overnight at the office. You're a bit of a masochist. Excuse me? Megan Clement in the meeting. This does look like it's pretty typical of a work outing. Everyone's still in their work clothes. There is a lot of them. They're all cramped up in a bar, but it's more of a mature crowd. Usually people will do this and then maybe bar hop to another one with a smaller group and then perhaps go clubbing afterward. So, um, does she have a... Does she have a... Um... Uh. <laughs> I was looking into the business you did. Right. Uh, priorities. <laughs> Buy an option on the US tenure at 4%. <laughs> Yields haven't been there since before you were born. Sorry, Nicole. Graduates don't normally pitch. Sometimes they will try to bring juniors or interns to meetings. Generally not dinner ones, but I'd say in office meetings they will try to bring juniors to. But this is pretty representative of a junior inside a meeting. You don't really know what to say and you don't really have the authority to speak to such a big client and you're kind of encouraged to not say anything in the first place and let the more senior people and full-timers speak. Be rested. Hunger fix will change the time. They're in at 9 tomorrow. We need to get the book to the printers by 6am. Don't stay off all night, but tell me that's doable. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. That's something they always say. Don't burn the midnight oil. Don't stay up too late, but we need this by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So basically what happens here is that she needs these books printed by 6 a.m. for a meeting that's in the morning. I'm not going to say this is dramatic because it does happen and it's happened to me where I've had to get up really early in order to print books, do last minute comments. It's just a matter of what happens when there's a 9 a.m. meeting. Okay, I'm just gonna say that I love the juxtaposition between this clubbing music and him listening to the music through his headphones. Like I said before, this is pretty accurate. They just went to a work event, so one of them went clubbing, the other one went back to the office, which happens. Hari, you're in the meeting with me. Well done. Can you just reprint it? The meeting's at 9am, you don't want to company confront it. What's happening here is that he sent these books to the print shop to be printed for the meeting, but he noticed that I think the font size or something was wrong, and so he's trying to get the print shop to reprint a page. I'd say this is accurate to a point, this does happen often, where we'll send a book to the print shop to print right before a meeting, but usually the one who wants to do a page switch isn't the analyst themselves, it's actually the associate or someone above. And another thing is that he didn't actually get anyone to sign off on this deck, he just finished it himself late at night, 
Usually when we submit a deck late at night, we'll send it around to, to the whole team and then all of the senior people will have to sign off on it in order for it to actually get printed rather than he just prints it himself and puts it on the associate's desk. But this, getting on the phone with the print job, is something that I've experienced very often. <laughs> Hari's death is an unexpected tragedy. The next 24 hours and the way we respond to this are defining. Harry ended up passing away probably from all the nights he didn't sleep and all the anxiety and stress he's had. I have heard of cases, it's not like it happens very often. If for example someone did have a condition and they were to stay up so many late nights and go through all this stress, yeah, it's super detrimental to your health and something horrible like this can happen. I do think that this is a little bit dramatic to show in the movie, but I think it goes to show that the culture does need to change and there are people who are undergoing extreme stress and not getting sleep at all and they need to be looked out for. Certain types of people feel the need to overcompensate because they feel inadequate. It's also bad for us. How do you mean? Take the girl with a nose ring. Isn't it impossible to compete with this girl's narrative? I mean, everything's aligned for her. Do you know nothing about her? Well, I know she went to a shit uni, and I know she's black. And I know those things are mutually exclusive, sure, but together, tick, tick. I actually feel like this personality type holds true. Obviously not for everyone. Not everyone is like this and is elitist and snobby about this stuff, but I have heard people say these types of things. So that's unfortunate that she thinks that way. We have the Southwark Suite. Let's do it. Interesting ending. I like how she just decided to splurge and get a super nice luxurious hotel room that honestly be worth like one entire week of my intern pay but whatever. Overall, my final thoughts on the show, I did find it a little bit dramatic at parts but of course, it's an HBO show. What do I expect them to just sit in the office all day doing PowerPoint Excel? Of course, they have to add some interesting lines to it, have to add a little bit more personality to the characters, have some really dramatic events happen. I think certain things like what the characters wear are incredibly accurate to investment banking. The work that I see them do on their screen as well is what investment bankers do. This show was created by people who were actually in investment banking and have an idea of it. It's just certain things are a little bit more exaggerated for the show. For example, the late nights, the stress, the anxiety going out, it's just all pushed to an extreme. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section below or if you watched the show and you enjoyed it or you were binging it, let me know your thoughts and what you think of it. Also, let me know if you guys want me to do a reaction video to episode 2 as well. I've only watched episode 1 so far. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel and also turn on the bell for notifications. Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!